What is up tonight, YouTube? So tonight, my workshop is a mess, and we're about to make it even more of a mess, and we're going to be building something kind of different. So I've been gone for two weeks because my wife and I have been working on something she's been asking for for two years, which was a entertainment center to pick our TV up off the ground. So now our TV stands about four foot tall, and two very large bookshelves, and they all hooked together, and it came out looking pretty nice. There's lights inside of it. So tonight's project, what we're working on, is my wife asked if she could run lights around the TV, and I, I didn't really like that idea. I didn't think it looked good. So what we're going to be doing is building a fake recessed lighting, kind of like a hood, that goes up above the TV mounted between the wall and the ceiling, and it can illuminate. Now originally I was going to do actual recessed lighting, and I wanted smart lights. But that would have cost me about another $210, and I already have about $700 into this project with the other stuff. So what we're actually going to be doing is just using some strip LEDs and making some lenses and making it look sort of recessed in a sense. I might have a little bit of a frame sticking down, but that's fine. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is build the whole base to this thing. So this is the start of what we have going on. So I have a frame all cut and milled up, and I have these little blocks here and then on the ends. So what's going to happen is this backer will be covered in uh, cheap strip LED lights, and then a face will be made to go over this with panels in it. So obviously it only shines through the panels. I may have to put shades on it, but I won't know that until I test it. And the point of these being sunk down is because I'm going to have a molding that matches the rest of the stuff on the outside here. So I want the face to be able to come out, but have nothing to do with the shell. So that's why I want it inset. And that's why those are three quarters of an inch lower. So we're going to take this down to my basement now because that's where my air compressor is. I want to start nailing everything together. Okay, so i got to talk quick before the compressor kicks back on because it is pretty loud down here. So what I'm going to be doing is just putting glue along the edge of the large panel flipping this up and nailing it in place until we have all four sides up. So let's get that done. So everything is glued and nailed together so we can keep working on it and it happens to fall at exactly now 48 inches. So we're doing our measurements right. So now I have this piece cut down. This is where the lenses will actually sit. Uh, so I cut it about an eighth of inch smaller on each side because you have to remember I'm going to be on a ladder and this piece has to go up and screw into place. So I'm going to map out where the screws go right now and then I can start mapping out where the uh, lenses will go. So with everything marked out, I am now ready to start drilling. Once I'm done drilling, I can countersink. Now I'm good to drive in my screws. So I marked out where my plexiglass will go. That's what all these lines are. And I don't even have to be that accurate when I cut this. As long as I fall in between these lines, pretty much I'll be fine. I'm going to cut this when it's screwed together because it's a lot more sturdy. Then I'll take it out and we need to rabbit it. So imagine these are like one large picture frame. Now all three are cut out, and if you look at them, they're a little choppy, but like I said, that does not matter at all, so now we are good to unscrew this, flip it over, and start cutting our rabbits. So I have my trim router with a rabbiting bit. This will put a step for all of the plexiglass to fit in, so we're just going to cut these now. <laughs> So I have all the plexiglass in, and as you can tell, it's not the best, but this is the inside, so it does not matter. Um, now we're going to make the outside look a little bit nicer, and we're on to paint. So all I'm doing now is cutting half-inch strips of poplar, uh, quarter-inch thick poplar, to kind of make a frame that will cover up all the bad edges, and even if there is still a little bit of visible a uh, rough edge. You have to remember this will be seven feet in the air, so you're probably not going to see much, especially since you would be looking directly at light. But 
I have most of them cut down. I'm going to finish cutting them down. Then I have to clean out the sand castle and I can start painting. So all three frames are done. Those are going to get stained where everything else is going to be painted. And then those will be glued in place later on. But it really cleans up the uh, rough edges. The outside is actually going to be getting this Celtic knot uh, crown molding, which is what wraps around the top of the uh, bookcase. So let's get this cleaned out because there's a lot to clean out. Okay, so now it's about 1.30 in the morning. This got painted, those got stained, and this got painted. So now we come back tomorrow. So the paint is all dry now on both of these and on those. So that's what we're gonna do next and install 32 feet of lights. So I didn't show it, but I put together the frames and all this is is super glue and some staples to hold it in place for now. And then once I'm inside with my nail gun, I will get wood glue and throw some pin nails in them to hold them to the face frame. But these just make it look better and this is why I didn't really care about having some janky edges because this is what you'll see instead. Alright guys, so the only thing that you missed that I did not do on camera was actually screw it to the wall just because I wanted to make sure I took my time and I truly understood because not only did I have to find out the stud locations, I had to find out where the screws would fall within it to have a six inch gap on each side of the entertainment center and six inches from the bookshelf, which wasn't a ton of math, but enough to make me want to just sit down and have a pen and paper and add up all these different measurements, but we are on to the molding now. And I want to get that cut and stained tonight so it can be completely done by tomorrow. Let's get to it. So anybody who has not wrapped molding around something before, we're going to want to cut a 45 degree angle, which is what I have my miter set at. And we have to remember that the measurement we take is the inside diameter of this. Because it's at an angle, the outside diameter would be slightly larger. But that's important to know, so we need to really pay attention to what side we are cutting. So right now, since I'm using this scrap piece from uh, left over from the other stuff, I'm going to do one of the side pieces, make sure it's right, and then I can just replicate that three more times. I got the first one cut out, matched it up in the house, fits perfectly. The next thing to remember is, since these are two separate pieces, if you haven't worked with fancy molding, um, you can waste a lot of money very quickly by not paying attention to what ways the miters have to go and in this case, because I'm putting two against each other, then I need to make sure that my miters are always going to be going in the direction they need to go. Because there are four different options. Um, now in this case, if I were to make a mistake, thankfully I could use it on the other side. But when I go to cut the last piece, that would just be a wasted piece. Especially when I get to the front ones that are over four feet long, then I would be wasting about $16 in fancy molding. So, I'm going to finish cutting these off camera and probably talk to you guys for a minute while we stain. And tomorrow we'll get to finish it all. So now that all of my molding is cut, dry fitted, and it's facing the right direction, I'm going to be putting on some semi-transparent espresso. The darker the stain, the better for me. I just really like dark stain. And to be honest, guys, I don't use brushes. I don't use anything fancy. I just use paper towel. So, let's come back when these are done. So they are all now stained. I just hit them with a lacquer. I'm going to get out of here before I can't breathe. Uh, and we're going to come back tomorrow and get these nailed up and we will be completely done.